we are going to start with grammar and we are on page 13. So go ahead and turn to page 13 in your grammar books. So I know you're on your phone, Tyler. It might be a little tricky seeing me share my screen, but um, hopefully you can see it okay. All right, page 13, um, everyone else? Oh, okay, I see Camila, she's coming in. <laughs> Good morning. I, I see that you got logged in. I know you were having trouble, but I'm glad it worked out. Does everybody have your books? Give me a thumbs up if you have your books. No. Nasaya, did you um did I send you what you need for today on an email or anything? Okay, so here's the thing I got to remind you guys because I don't I don't know that you don't have your books yet, so I need you guys to have your parents email me and then I will send you what you need for class cuz otherwise you're just sitting there and you don't have anything to work on. So, here's my advice for Camila. I think I gave Camila your copy, right? Did I email your mom what you need for today? She's not sure. Okay. So when we get to the practice page for grammar, you guys, Nasaya and Camila can copy the sentence on a lined piece of paper, and then you can work with a sentence still. So, um, so try to remember to email me the day before if you don't have your books yet, and then I can email you all the pages you need, and then you can print them at your house, okay? So we'll just keep going. Um, okay, somebody's having, a, are you having a hard time hearing me, Tyler? Do you have your volume all the way up on your on your phone? on the side, maybe try to turn up your volume a little bit. All right, I'm gonna get started. Let me know, Tyler, but um, page 13, we're talking about pronouns. And a pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. So if you have a, a, a noun, somebody's name like Nisaya, um, Later in the sentence, when you're referring back to Nisaya, you would use she or her. Those are pronouns because if you keep saying the name over and over and over again, it gets really hard to uh, read that, right? It feels redundant where you're seeing the same name over and over and over again. So we use pronouns when we're referring back to a person. Um, and if the person is a boy, then you would use he or his or him right? Those are pronouns to take the place of a noun. If you're talking about a computer or a cell phone or the bed or a desk or something like that, you're going to use the word it because those are not male and female, right? They're just objects. So those are pronouns you would use um, when you're referring back to a noun. So there are many types of pronouns, okay? We just talked about some personal pronouns that take the place of common and proper nouns. The personal pronouns in the table below are organized by number, person, and function. So number is here. Look at this chart in the middle of the page. I know you're having trouble hearing me, Tyler, but I'm, I'm talking as loud as I can talk and I've got my volume up, so you might need to turn yours up. Does everybody else, can you hear me okay? Everybody else? Okay, good. Um, so this number here, singular means one, and then plural means more than one. It could be two, it could be a hundred, right? Or more, it could be a million. So that's the difference between the two numbers here. Singular is always just one. And then when you look over here at persons, this is who is speaking. So first person means you're the one speaking. And I always like to think of video games, if you've ever played a video game before, like Minecraft, when you're playing in first person mode, it's everything you can see as the player. 
right? You're, you're turning your head and you can, you can view things from first person. That's because it's your view. And then second person would be the person you're talking to. And you would use words like you and your. And so if you're playing that game, you're speaking to another character, you're still in there. And then third person is completely different because you're not in that mode if you're um, playing a video game or whatever, if you're reading a story, that's a better example. When you're talking about two separate characters that are having a conversation and you're not involved, you're just like watching in, that would be considered third person. So when you're reading a story, most of the time, it's third person view. You're talking about like two different characters, like the, um, let's see, we haven't read any yet in this class, but eventually you're going to read a story about um, the bald man and the fly. That story's coming up. And the bald man actually talks to the fly and they have this, you know, interaction with each other. That would be considered third person. So we'll we'll learn that as we go here. Oh, good. You got it fixed. I see that chat. Okay. Um, so in this chart, you'll see words like I, me, my, mine as first person, you, you, your, yours, that's second person. And then third person is he, she, it, him, her, it, his, her, its, his, hers, its. And then you've got plural down here. When you're talking to another person, you still use you and your and yours. But then if you're third person, words like they, them, their, theirs. Those are all the pronouns that we have. So this is a good page to refer back to when you're working on your homework and you're looking for a pronoun and maybe you might forget what a pronoun is. You can always look back to this page to remind yourself. Here's the example. And in this book, you're going to label the pronouns with a PR because that's the first two letters in the word pronoun. So that makes sense, right? PR. The little man was thankful. He gave the soldiers the horn. It would play, it would help them. So we have here, he, that's a pronoun because it's referring back to the man, the little man. And then it is talking about the horn. So you don't have to keep saying the same words over and over again. You use pronouns to take the place of that. And then them, um, that would refer back to the soldiers because that's plural, right? So them refers to a plural noun. All right, here's an example down here. If you did not use pronouns, this is how it would sound. The little man was thankful. The little man gave the soldiers the little man's horn. The horn would help the soldiers. I mean, I hear a little man a bunch of times. I hear soldiers a bunch of times. So it just, it's kind of awkward to read it like that. It's better to have pronouns, okay? You always bring in those pronouns after you introduce the noun though. And then capitalization here, there is another personal pronoun, I. Anytime you use I by itself, you probably already know this, you always capitalize it. And so in this book, if they forget, well, you know, I say they forget, but they did it on purpose. They made mistakes on purpose in here for you to find. So when you see that I and it's not capital, you need to put three little lines underneath it to show that it should be capital. This example at the bottom says, when the little man gave me the horn, I blew it. So I should be capital. See those little lines under there. That's how you mark them in this book. Any questions about this page so far? If not, shake your head no. Okay. We're going to go to the practice page now. This is where Nisaya and Camila, you can copy down this sentence right here on a line piece of paper, and then you can still do the lesson with us. So um, how about William? Can you read our sentence to us today, please? They told the little man about their problem. Good. And so the vocabulary word is in bold here, and the word is problem. Um, Tyler, can you define problem? What is that? What does that word mean? Problem. Problem means like when something doesn't go right. Okay, good. That's a good way to explain it. If something's difficult to do, it could be a math problem, but it could be a problem 
you know, with your computer, it's lagging or there's an issue you need to update or whatever, there's problems there too. So anytime something's uh, difficult, good, Tyler. So go ahead and put a, a check mark by the word vocabulary. You always want to make sure you understand the word. If not, you need to look it up either online or ask your parent for help on defining the word. Under market, you have article. Go ahead and write in the three articles that we talked about the other day. A and the. There's only one. I bet you could find it. So go ahead and find it and label it by yourself. Easy peasy cheesy. It's the word the right there. And then how about, Nisaya, can you help us find two nouns in this sentence? Um, Remember, nouns are person, place, thing, or idea, something tangible. Man? Good, yes, man is one. Um, the other one's a little tricky e? that would be a pronoun so don't forget that word because we'll label it later you want to see if somebody else can find it with you okay e? william knows go ahead what's the other noun Old. say it again Old. <laughs> Say it one more time, William. I couldn't hear you. Told. Oh, oh, told? Is that what you're saying, told? That word is actually a verb, so that's not a noun. Camila, do you know where the other noun is? You want to try to take a guess? I think Olivia knows it. Olivia, okay, what's the other noun? There. That's a pronoun. So the word is problem, actually. That's a noun. Because a problem is a thing, right? It's a it's an issue that you're having, um, and it's a difficult situation. But because of the way it's written in the sentence, it's their problem. That makes it a noun. I know that was a little tricky. So nice try, you guys. I know you were on the right track. But... That's it for the nouns. And then we've got two pronouns. And actually, Nasaya named one and then Olivia named one. This one here, he is a pronoun. It's taking the place of another noun. And then there is the other pronoun. Okay, good. And then how about, um, let's see, Camila, how about the what word should be capitalized? in this sentence. What needs a capital? He. He, good. Okay, so what you're gonna do is three little lines under the H like that. Excellent. And then Tyler, how about, what do we need at the end at, as an end mark? A period. Very good. That's it, so you can check all those off at the top. We're finished with this sentence, but I'm gonna have you write it later after class. So we can keep moving on to the other part of the lesson. But what you'll do is copy it in your nice handwriting down below, making sure to use a capital H and the period down below. Now your homework for grammar is gonna be the next three pages. So it'll be pages 16, 17, and 18. That's what you have for homework in grammar. Does anybody have any questions about any of the grammar things we talked about today? No? Okay, good. Excellent. This is going to get easier and easier for you guys because we're going to do it every time in class. And then when you're doing it at home, it's extra practice and you'll start getting it. By the way, I wanted to remind you that on your homework on Google Classroom, I always post the answer key so you can check your work. OK, so here's how you do it. You finish the page by yourself, all three pages, and then you go back to look at the answer answer key with your parent or if your parent's okay with you doing that by yourself, check with them first. And then you make sure you got the right answers and then you submit it. So it's it's attached on your Google Classroom. Just wanna make sure you guys knew that. Okay, now 
we are going to move on to the writing. So you need your binder. Um, first thing I want to do is ask you to give me a thumbs up if you retold the story um, about the giant saguaro and the dog in the shadow. Give me a thumbs up if you retold those stories to your parents or one of your parents. Good. And Nisaya is like, ah. Maybe you didn't get a chance to. Okay, don't forget. Oh, Camila didn't either. Okay, so that was part of your homework. You have to practice retelling the story. So make sure you do that because I, I want you to have them sign the outline so I know that you did that. Okay, Nisaya and Camila? After class, make sure you practice retelling them that story. Okay, because that is that is important. What we're learning how to do is take our keywords and put them back into a complete sentence because now we're gonna start writing those sentences. So it's good practice to start verbally doing that. And then it'll be easier for you when you start actually writing those sentences. So in your binder, in the front pocket should be all the stuff you guys worked on this week. You should have the dog in the shadow and the giant saguaro, these stories in the front pocket here. And your keyword outlines and even this yellow page. So all, all the stuff that you've been working on should be in the front pocket of your binder because that's where we keep the stuff you're, re you're working on currently, okay? The first thing I'm gonna have you put away is this yellow page. By the way, this is just a picture or a diagram of how you set up an outline. And we'll refer back to this later, but this is page 15 and it's yellow. I'm gonna have you put this one away first. So in your binder, find the tab that says model charts and outlines. There's a tab, if you look on the, on the tabs that you have in the back there, model, charts, and outlines. When you find that tab, I want you to turn that tab and behind that, put away the yellow page 15. It goes behind model, charts, and outlines. You're gonna stick it in the rings. Be careful with your papers. You don't want them to fall out. And then close up your rings. Give me a thumbs up once you put that page away. Right behind model charts and outlines. That tab right there, model charts and outlines, your, your paper goes here. So Camila and Nasaya, when you get your binders, I'm gonna have to help you guys organize it because we're gonna, everything's gonna be in different places. So once you get them, Maybe we'll do a separate Zoom and just work on your binder. Uh, Tyler? Uh-oh, I think he froze on us. Your connection's bad. I'm sorry, Tyler. Okay, try it again. I think you're back. It's five. You got it? Okay. Okay, where's the... Where do yellow page the yellow page do you see the tab that says model charts and outlines you see a yes. tab that looks like that so you're going to go behind that tab so you'll turn that tab and then stick it right there behind it does that make sense yeah but where do i write the yellow page at oh i, I see the yellow page should be in the front of your binder because we had it out with our lesson last week it's page 15. It should be with your other stuff with dog in the shadow and the giant saguaro, all that stuff. Okay. I know it's probably hard in the car. So if you, if you would rather do this later when you get home, that might be a good idea just because when you're opening your rings, you might lose stuff. Okay, so I'm going to have to go back and watch the recording because I don't have that right now. Okay, that's okay, okay Tyler. Don't worry about it. 
The other pages though, find the one that says finished compositions. Do you see that one, that tab that says finished compositions? Yes. Look for that one. And then you're gonna turn that tab and behind that, you're gonna put all of your papers for the dog in the shadow and the giant saguaro. So the original stories go back there and then your keyword outlines. Everything that you did for the dog in the shadow and the giant saguaro goes behind that tab that says finished compositions. So you can open the okay, read. Thank you. Yeah, and stick them in there. Your, your outlines and everything go right back there. I like to keep this page on top and it just kind of helps keep it a little bit more organized, but Anyway, all that stuff goes behind finished compositions, okay? Okay. Okay, good. Then make sure to close your rings. And then there's one more thing I need you to do before you put your binder away. Give me a thumbs up if you put this away. William, you got it? No, okay. This is so hard to do on Zoom. I wish I could be there to help you guys. It's really hard to do this on Zoom, but if you need help from your parents later, you can do it later. Do you know what to do, William? Okay. And I know Camila and Nasi Nasaya, you'll you'll have to do this later too. Okay. So finished compositions, that just means you're done with those, right? So every time, every every week when we're finished with a week, this was week one, it's always going to go in the finished compositions. So that, that'll be a routine that we do. I know it's new to you guys, but once we get into this routine, you'll be able to do it a little faster. And another tip while you're working on that, do you know in your binder, you have these little tabs? They're right here these metal things on the top and the bottom, you pull those apart to open your rings and you push them together to close the rings. I don't want you to go like this because what happens if you open your rings like that, you might bend them and then the pages won't turn right and then you're just gonna, it's not fun. I'll just say that. <laughs> so don't pull it here. Use these tabs on the top and the bottom to pull apart and push together. Okay, that's how you open and close your rings. Did you get it, William? Yay, okay. Now go back to the front, all the way to the front of your binder right here. This, you know, this page with this picture of this boy. And then this first tab right here says source texts. Turn to that tab and you'll see week two. This is the next week we're gonna work on. It's called Scorpions. And there's three pages that you need to take out for week two. You're gonna take out page 17, which is this one, where it says week two Scorpions. You're gonna take out the Scorpions article here. And one more yellow page, those three pages. And then you're gonna see week three. Don't take out week three, that's for next time. We're just taking out week two, okay? So take all three pages out and make sure to close your rings. Don't take out week three, leave that one right there. Did you get it, William? Good. And then the last thing I need you to do is get out a lined piece of paper. Everybody needs a lined piece of paper. Actually two, two pieces of paper. And then, you can set your binder aside. Okay. Good job. Good job, William. I know it's it's kind of tricky on Zoom, but you did it. So I'm happy about that. Two pieces of lined paper. Okay. And this one, like I've said before, I'll remind you. This is a lesson plan, but this is a lesson plan if you were doing this by yourself. But since you're doing it with me, you don't need this page, but I like for you to keep it together with everything for that lesson, just so that 
it's all together, okay? But we don't need this one. So what I want you to do is just move it to the back of your stack at the bottom here, just put it underneath. And we're gonna start with this story here called Scorpions. I gotta ask, has anyone seen a real scorpion before? Raise your hand if you have, nope, nope. I have, they're scary looking. They're like little miniature aliens. <laughs> They are weird creatures. And anyway, today we're going to learn about them. Here's a picture of one. And um, it's interesting. So I think you guys are going to like this. So what we're going to do first is read this article. Now I'm calling it an article because it has facts. So it's not a character or, you know, they're not talking to each other or doing something together. This is actually information about scorpions. And then we're going to write a little report about it. Okay, and I'm gonna help you. This is this is actually, I think it's kind of fun to do it. So it's called Scorpions. And I'm gonna go ahead and read and you guys can just follow along. If you don't have this story in front of you, you can follow along on my, on my page on the screen. Scorpions are not insects. They are arachnids and have eight legs like spiders with two pinchers and a barbed tail. There are over 2,000 scorpion species. Scorpions are found on every continent except Antarctica. All species are venomous, but only about 30 have venom that can kill a human. Mainly, they use their sting to paralyze their prey. Scorpions need very little air or food. Remarkably tough, they can often survive being kept in a freezer overnight. After they hatch, dozens of scorpion babies will climb up and ride around on their mother's back. In China, giant scorpions, grilled or fried, are sold in food shops and eaten as a delicacy. Okay, let's just say, ew, I don't want to eat a scorpion. That's gross. Have you guys ever seen those suckers or those lollipops that have a, a scorpion inside of them before? Yeah, really I'm saying, yeah. Sometimes in uh, like Vallarta or any uh, Mexican uh, type of store, that is a treat for them. They like some, you know, I'm not saying all, but you know, that is something that you can find there. And I even heard in Pismo Beach, they have a, a shop that has really weird types of foods and they actually have fried or like um, dried scorpion that you can just eat. Somebody in my other class said it was like, like potato chips. And I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> That's what he said. He's had it before. So, so if you ever go to Pismo Beach, you can see if you can find them there. But anyway. This is information about scorpions. By the way, that word arachnids is just a classification of a creature. And this is like a spider. They say these are more like a spider than an insect. So a lot of times insects can fly, they have wings, and they have uh, various numbers of legs, but these have only eight legs. And that's considered a classification for like the spider group. And so that's what arachnids means. Barbed tail just means it has a really sharp point at the end of the tail. And that's what they use to sting. And the venom is inside their tail. So when they sting you with that tail, that's how the venom gets in your skin. And if you think of like a rattlesnake, they have fangs, right? And they bite with their fangs and then the venom goes through their fangs. But for a scorpion, it's in their tail. Yes, William. You know a type of scorpion that doesn't have a tail? No, do you? Yeah, I know. I saw a video all about it. Do you remember what it's called? No, but it lives in caves. Interesting. I wonder if they have venom then, if they don't have a tail. Maybe it's in their mouth or something. It's it's in their claws. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so venom means poison, right? That's something that can uh, really make a person sick or even kill them. It says that there's 30 different species that actually can kill a human. 
And that word paralyze, if in case you don't know, it just means that you can't move your muscles. It like freezes up your muscles. So you can't move. That would be so scary if that happened. And then that word pray right here is E-Y. It's different than pray with A-Y. That would mean to pray to God, right? But this is P-R-E-Y. That means your if if an animal is a prey, they're the ones that are probably going to get eaten or stung. Um, and then the predator is the one going after that animal. Okay, so you've got predator and prey. So for a scorpion, probably like a mouse or something small like that would be their prey. They would sting it, it would die, and then they would eat it. Okay, that's that's what prey means. It's, it's what they want to eat. Uh, what else can I tell you? Oh, delicacy, this word. It, it kind of sounds like delicate. If something's delicate, it's really fragile or special, or maybe it's like crystal or something like that, breakable maybe. Delicacy is a special treat to eat. And this would be rare and probably expensive. Like if you've ever heard of calamari or escargot or um, other types of appetizers that are not they're kind of expensive, but they're special. Like escargot is actually snails. It's kind of gross, but they serve that in France. In China, they serve these guys grilled on a barbecue, on a stick. Ew. But anyway, it's supposed to be like special. Okay. That's what delicacy means. It's, it's special and probably expensive. Okay. Now on your line piece of paper, go ahead and put, get that out. And on the upper left-hand side here, I'm just going to draw a line, but I want you to put your name there. Your name goes here, right next to that red line on that top line right here. And then right underneath that is going to be the date. And today is September 28th, 2023. So go ahead and write the date right under your name. And then skip a line, and you're going to write the word scorpions. And then under scorpions, right underneath it, I'm going to have you put KWO. And who can tell me what KWO stands for? William. Keyword outline. Keyword outline. Is that what you were going to say too, Camila? Okay. I saw your hand go up right after William and I was like, I bet she knows too. Keyword outline. We're just going to call it KWO because it's a lot easier to write. So why not? And then on the side, I want you to skip a line and over here next to this red line, you're going to write one through 10. Just like that. One through 10, right next to that red line. And that means this article has 10 sentences and we're gonna start building our keyword outline now using that article. And then once we get all our keywords down, we're gonna take it to the next level and we're gonna write some sentences. And this is where you're gonna really start building your writing skills, okay? We've done a lot of practice with the keywords and retelling the stories. And now we're going to start writing it. Okay. So I'm going to help you with the first one. And then you guys are going to take turns doing each sentence. The first one is super easy. And that's why I picked it for me. Ha <laughs> ha. I get the easy one. It says scorpions are not insects. That's it. That's a short sentence. Easy to find those keywords. I'm going to say scorpions, not and insects. Remember, you can have three key words. That's all, just three. Sometimes you can use numbers and symbols and stuff like that. But for this one, easy peasy cheesy. So go ahead and write scorpions and then not and then insects for number one. That's going to be an easy one. 
So just because that was so super duper easy, I'm going to do the second sentence for you. And then we'll start moving into taking turns, finding keywords. The second sentence is tricky, but I have an idea that I'm going to share with you. It's, it's a long sentence and it has a lot of details that are really good to remember. So it says right here, they are arachnids and have eight legs like spiders with two pinchers and a barbed tail. That's a lot. And I want to remember it all, but I can only use three words. So here's my, my thought. Okay. Arachnids. That's important. That's a keyword that tells me what class of creature these are. Okay. Arachnids. So go ahead and copy that word down for number two, because I know I want to have that one. Arachnids. The nice thing about writing these keywords down when they're a hard word like that, you can always look back on the original and just copy it. Okay. Then I've got eight, not me, but the arachnids. The scorpions have eight legs, like spiders, two pinchers, and a barbed tail. So I like all of that. But I can only pick two more words because I already have one. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the number eight because numbers are free. So put a number eight there. And then for legs, I think I'll draw a leg. So I'm going to look at the picture here and the leg kind of comes out and down. And it's got a little foot on it here. So, okay, I'm just going to try out, down with a little foot like that. Now yours doesn't have to look exactly like mine. As long as you know what it is, that's all that matters. It kind of looks like a, a Z kind of sideways a little bit. And then I put a little foot on it. And that's going to remind me eight legs. So we can use a symbol like that and we don't have to count it as a word. So that's kind of nice. And then it says, I'm going to think about spiders. I don't think I'm going to use that word in this one because I know arachnids are spiders, but I'm going to go on to where it says two pinchers. Well, there's another number. So I can put the number two and then I think I will put the word pinchers there. So I'm going to write pinchers. Next, two pinchers. So now, technically, I only have two words so far. I've got two numbers and a symbol. That's okay, I don't have to count those. I have room for one more word. And so the last part says barbed tail. Now that word barbed, remember, think of barbed wire, if you've ever seen that before on a farm or just on a big piece of property where they have a fence, a lot of times they use barbed wire. It has like little sharp pieces of metal coming off of it so that the animals that are in there like cows, so they don't escape, right? There's, they stay in there. They don't want to go near it because they'll get poked with that wire. So barbed is like a sharp piece of, you know, on this tail, it's the end of it. It's very sharp. So I want to put that word barbed. And then for tail, I'm going to try to draw this tail. Now notice the tail goes up and it loops around with this sharp thing at the end. So I'm going to try to draw that as a symbol. And I'm not going to do the details as, as much as that picture there. But I am going to kind of draw it up and down. And then I'm going to put this little sharp piece right at the end there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. All it has to do is remind you that that's a tail. That's the tail on the scorpion. Now we did it. So that was a tough one. And that was a really good example of how you can fit all the information you need, but you can use some symbols and some numbers so you can fit those words in there. All right. So moving on to sentence number three, I'm going to have William do this one. I'll read the sentence and then you tell us what keywords we should put in the outline is right here. There are over 2000 scorpion species. So what should we put for our outline there, William? 2000. Yes. And guess what? It's a number. So we can just write it out. 2000. Okay. What else? Uh, found. 
Okay, we're on this one. There are over 2,000 scorpion species. Species. Yeah. And we could even put scorpion, right? Let's put scorpion. And then species. Species is one of those words. It could be species or species. It's kind of like tomato, tomato. There's different ways of saying words like that. They're both correct. Species or species is both correct. Okay. And we could put another word, but we don't need it. So it's fine to just leave it with two. We've got 2,000 scorpion species. All right, let's go on to Nisaya. Your sentence is here. Scorpions are found on every continent except Antarctica. So how can we put the keywords in our outline for that sentence? Found. Yeah, found. What else? Um, continent. Okay. Um, Antarctica. Yes, I agree with that. Except for I need, I think we need that word except, but maybe we could do a symbol for except. What do you think we could put for that? Mm. Let's start with what you found, what you said, found, and then continent. Can we make a symbol for except? That means not, right? Not Antarctica. So how could we show not? X. I agree with that. I think so. Let's do a big X. So we don't think it's actually a little like an X in the alphabet, but it's like not. It's like eh, not Antarctica. And then write Antarctica. That's good, Nisaya. So we'll just have to remember when we come across that X, that means not. Found on all the continents except Antarctica. Good. All right, Camila, are you there? Okay, I see you. Um, your sentence is the next one here. It says, all species are venomous, but only about 30 have venom that can kill a human. What do you think we should put for our keywords there? Venomous. I agree, yes. Venomous, for sure. What else? 30. Yes. We could use that number. Human. Venomous, 30, and human? Mm -hmm. I think this one might be really important, though. Right here, kill. Because that tells us what happens to the humans, right? But I agree, let's start with venomous. Go ahead and write that one down. Venomous, and then we can do the number 30, then we don't have to count that. That's kind of nice. But then I do think we need kill and human. That's kind of scary, you know, because I think what happens is if you uh, if you come across one of these, there's only 30. Remember, there's 2,000 species of these things, but only about 30, which isn't very many, have enough venom. They have a lot of venom. I'm thinking they're big, and they could actually kill a human. And it might be, I mean, you just don't want to go near these guys. <laughs> That's all I got to say about that, because when you live in Bakersfield, or Mojave, or any of these desert cities that all of us are living in, even in Tehachapi, even though it's mountains up here, it's still desert. It's like a high desert. And uh, scorpions are here. I don't think we have the ones that can kill a human, but we have the ones that would hurt and maybe make you sick. So if you ever see these guys, run away. <laughs> You see a, a scorpion, just go the other way. They can't go very fast, so you can get away from them pretty easily. <laughs> so don't pick it up, all right? Definitely don't pick it up. All right, let's see. Let's go on back to William here. Your sentence is going to be this one. Mainly, they use their sting to paralyze their prey. So how can we put that in our outline? Sting? 
Good. Paralyze and pray. Yep, I agree. Good job, William. Sting. Paralyze. Make sure I spell in that right. Paralyze with a Z. And pray. Make sure you put an E there, not an A. P-R-E-Y. <clears throat> Sting, paralyze, and pray. Good. Nasaya, back to you. Scorpions need very little air or food. Mm, little air yeah. food. Yes, I agree with that. We don't need to put scorpions because we know that's what we're talking about. So you're right. I like that. Little air food. Nice. Good job, Nasaya. Okay. Back to Camila. Your sentence is right here. Remarkably tough. They can often survive being kept in a freezer overnight. <laughs> Remarkably. Okay. What else? Survive. Yes. Freezer overnight. Mm, yes, I agree, but that's four. Maybe, can we just do survive freezer overnight? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good. We know that's remarkable, meaning like that's crazy, right? <laughs> that's pretty crazy that they can do that. So survive, I like that. Good job, Camila. Survive and freezer and overnight. Okay, back to William. After they hatch, dozens of scorpion babies will climb up and ride around on their mother's back. Hatch. Hatch. Okay. Babies. I think that's a good start. However, the interesting part of that sentence is that they climb up and ride on their mother's back. So I kind of think that's important so how could we fit that one in maybe maybe start with babies babies climb uh -huh. and ride yes babies climb ride or babies climb mother and then maybe we could draw a little stick figure and point to the back here's what i'm thinking those are those are all good william you're doing a great job so I'm thinking, what if we did babies, climb, and then we put mothers, and then here's what I'm thinking, a little guy or a mom, <laughs> actually, and I'm going to put the, both arms forward like that, and then I'm going to draw an arrow to the back. Does that make sense? Can you guys see that okay? I'll zoom in. See how I made this little stick figure right here? And then I put the arms going this way so it looks like they're moving that way. And then an arrow to the back. That way we can remember back, right? <laughs> A little symbol. Babies climb mother's back. As long as you know what it is, that's the main thing. So your picture might look a little different than mine. That's okay. Uh, last one, Nasaya at the very end. In China, giant scorpions grilled or fried are sold in food shops and eaten as a delicacy. Um, China? Yes. Grilled delicacy? Yes, I agree with that. And you didn't say fried, and that's okay because you can use one or the other. And I think grilled is fine. China grilled delicacy. Very good. China grilled delicacy. And remember that word delicacy just means it's fancy and it's special and kind of rare. 
Awesome. You guys did it. That was really good. You guys are already getting faster at building these outlines. And that's good because we're going to be doing a lot of these outlines. And then now I'm going to show you how to use this outline to now start writing. So on your other clean piece of paper that you have, I had you get out too. So get out your other, your next clean sheet. And I'm going to have you set up how you're going to write your paragraph. So go ahead and at the top again on the new page, put your name up here and then the date again. This is a good habit. Every time we get out a new piece of paper, today is the 28th. And then again, skip a line and put scorpions. And now don't put KWO because we already did that one. This is going to be your paragraph. Now, the first thing I want to talk to you about is double spacing. Have you ever heard that term before, double space? Yeah, William has. That means you're not going to write on every single line. You're going to leave a space between lines. And if this is your first time, don't worry because you'll get used to it. But here's what I want you to do to help you remember to double space. And I'll tell you later why that's so important. Right under scorpions, over here by the red line, I just want you to put a little tiny X. That means don't write on that line. And then I want you to leave the next one blank. And then I want you to put a little tiny X there on the next one. Do you see how I'm skipping? Skip a line, X. Skip a line, X. Skip a line, X. Do that all the way to the bottom of your paper. Every other line, skip a line, X. All the way to the bottom. So you should have an X and then a space. And then an X and then a space. And I did my X's kind of small because it's like a little reminder to me that I'm not going to write on that line. I'm gonna leave that line blank. It has an X to remind me of that. Like, don't write here, don't write here, don't write here. So you've got every other line does not have an X. Those are the ones you're gonna write on, okay? This is just to help you get into the habit of skipping lines. And it's really, really, really important that you do this. It's part of your assignment. So try to remember to do this now. The other thing I want to just talk to you about for a minute is using a pen. How many of you have ever written a story using pen before? Give me a thumbs up if you have, thumbs down if you have not. I see thumbs up, I see thumb down. Good, okay. Yes, you usually use a pencil, right? Camila and Olivia and William. <clears throat> the reason why I'm suggesting using a pen for a couple of reasons. One, it's actually a little bit easier on the hand when you're writing with pen, you don't have to push so hard because pens just, the ink comes out a lot easier. Another reason is with pencil, have you ever written a story and you're like, you don't like it and then you gotta erase, oh, I don't like that, let me start over and you erase, 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 you blow off all the pencil shavings and or the eraser shavings and then you start writing again, you're like, ah, I messed up again, you erase, erase, erase and then ah, you're just erasing a lot. Has that ever happened to you guys before? It has to me because I have a hard time. I want it to be just right, you know? And if you're spending a lot of time erasing, that makes your homework time even longer. So there's a technique that I want you to use when using a pen. So what I want you to do though, for now, for this one, and I'm gonna talk to you more about it next week since we're running out of time. It's okay for this first one to use a pencil, but then we're gonna start using a pen, okay? Just wanted to tell you about that ahead of time. Now, look at your outline right here. I'm gonna have mine underneath it so I can see it here. Number one says, scorpions, not insects. And remember when you practice saying these, you thought of a sentence like, scorpions are not insects. That's the sentence, right? So that can be a good first sentence for your paragraph. See the X, go under the X where there's no X. 
And then we're going to indent because this is a paragraph. So you're going to start in a little bit. And I want you to write that sentence, scorpions are not insects. So I'm going to write it here. Scorpions are not insects, period, okay? So you indent on the line that does not have an X a little bit over because this is a paragraph and you write down the whole sentence, scorpions are not insects, period. Now I still have space over here, so I'm gonna keep going but you see this very faint line down, that is your margin. It's okay to go a little bit past it, but you don't wanna go all the way to the edge of your paper because then you have to squeeze your letters together and then it's hard to read it, right? So we wanna try to be close to that red line. So I'm gonna keep going. And now I'm gonna look at number two. We already did number one, so you can cross out number one because we already wrote it here. Now we're on number two. It says arachnids, eight, I remember that's legs, two pinchers and a barbed tail. So I'm gonna start with a pronoun they because I already told the reader we're talking about scorpions. Scorpions are not insects. So now I'm gonna say after the period, they are, and notice I went a little past that red line, that's okay. But that's my clue now to go to the next line. But guess what? You're gonna not write on the X line. You're gonna go to the one that's blank underneath that. You're skipping a line. They are arachnids and have, and I'm gonna write out that number eight because it should be a word in my paragraph. Eight legs, I'm gonna give you time to copy this, so don't worry, two pinchers, See, I went over that line a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to put my comma and I'm going to go down, skip a line. Don't write on the X line. Go to the next one. And a barbed tail. So just to recap while you're writing, keep writing until you're done with that sentence. But basically you're doing the same thing you did when you practiced retelling the story. Look at the three words, think of a sentence, a whole sentence with those words, and then write the sentence. Instead of saying the sentence this time, you're gonna write the sentence. They are arachnids and have eight legs, two pinchers and a barbed tail. And there's other ways you could say that. It doesn't have to be exactly like that. So everybody's paragraph is gonna be a little bit different because it's gonna be in your words, but you're still gonna use all of your keywords in the outline. Okay, so we did number two, you can put an X through number two. So your homework this week is going to be to finish writing this paragraph. Guess what? All the important words you already have figured out. So this should be pretty easy for you actually. And right here after this period, you're gonna keep going on sentence number three, which is here, number three, 2000 scorpion species. So you're gonna think of a sentence using those keywords and then write the sentence here, but don't forget, Skip lines, don't write on the lines that have an X. You're gonna skip that one. So when you see that X, you go, oh, okay, I gotta go to the next one, okay? Does everybody understand what you're doing for homework this week for your writing part? I see a thumbs up, good, Camila, thank you, good. All right, and then your grammar pages, you still have that to do too, but use this outline so your whole paragraph will have 10 sentences all together. So use the outline, look at number three, make think of a sentence, write the sentence. Look at number four, think of a sentence, write the sentence. So that is your homework. You guys did awesome today. I'm super proud of you. You're really getting that keyword outline down and that's good. Now we can start writing. 
Does anybody have any questions about homework? Nope. All right, guys, that's it for today. Have a good one and I'll see you next week. Bye.